presenting your host for the Racecoin podcast, Jay. What's going on, my Racecoin fans? I am joined by Miro. He is a absolute veteran in the racing industry from Slovakia, a truly one of a kind racer. Welcome to the show. Hi. Yeah, I mean, look at the, I mean, you could just see from the background, right? There are like literally thousands of trophies. Him and I were just discussing before the podcast that, um, you know, if he was to be uh, showing me every single one of his trophies, I would end up turning as old as he is right now by the time he's finished. So yeah, I mean, let's get straight into it. What are the most obvious questions that is on everyone's mind? How are you still at the top of your game winning races like uh, in Asian Le Mans last year and the International GP, GT Open at the age of 57? Oof. At first, uh, sorry for my English because I don't understand everything and uh, also I am not a native speaker. Oof. For me, I start with uh, motorsport a little bit uh, late because uh, I love motorsport. I love motorsport from a uh, very small boy. But of course, motorsport is about money. And at first, we are from a very small country, very poor country. Uh, I can start only if I have money for motorsport. That's, I start in the age when uh, another driver finished. Mm -hmm. And I love motorsport still. I mean, very ambitious, ambitious driver. And for it, I drive. I drive all of what is possible. So how, how are you still finding the, the drive and the ability to actually carry on competing with people like more than probably half your age at this age? Uh, <laughs> it's very, it's a difficult question. If uh, health is okay, if uh, motivation, I have still motivation and what can I do? Retire and sit at home? <laughs> I, like, I like and I love that atmosphere. The atmosphere is fantastic in that, in that uh, event and uh, of course, it's my world, it's my life. I don't know, if I finish, maybe I only it will be very bad with health or or that <laughs> yeah i mean the one of the major things you actually uh, touched upon slightly was you started at um a much later age because obviously motorsport is about money so how did you manage to um get sponsorship or have enough money uh to accumulate it to be able to get into the sport because um and in doing so prior to that you must have also had the dream earlier so you know you had the dream let's say about the age of 20 and then you worked 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 accumulated and then you know finally made it a reality and that's when it happened uh, i started with this dream if i have uh, one year because all children have first word mama only me auto car <laughs> <laughs> my mother told me this i looked for car and every time auto auto no, it's of course, um, it's very difficult. We are a small country, motorsport, no have tradition in my country. And uh, we are all alone, only one team, which runs some big races in the world. And uh, sponsorship is very problematic here. Uh, we are a country for ice hockey, <laughs> no, for, for football, but not for motorsport. Uh, that's uh, my sponsorship. I have only two, three small sponsors and uh, I give my private money for motorsport because it's my love, it's my hobby and a good life. And I think it's a very good investition for me. Good so, business. Yeah, of course. And how do you balance the two, um, working on your business and then also working and you know, training for motor motorsport? How do you balance the two? Uh, before, of course, was 80-90% business. Now, last five years, I think is uh, I... I give more time for motorsport because I sold some of my activities. I have only 20% of company now and all management is for my Luxembourg partner. And uh, I have time for motorsport because of course I like, I love that motorsport. I love that races. I, I run around all world and uh, I need a lot of time for it. Help me some team, but we are small team. We are not professional team. That's, I need to give a lot of, of my time and I don't have a lot of time 
looking for my age. Yes. Because 57, maybe next year, maybe after three years, I don't know. That would be five okay. Five years, maybe 10 years, you know, who knows? Five years, that's fantastic. But 57 is not, not uh, age if you take plan for 10 years. Yes, of course, of course. I mean, you've been the number of different races you've participated in is just crazy to name a few his you know le mans spa 12 hour sebring daytona uh, porsche super cup asian le mans um out of all of these races you've participated in what's been your favorite and why yeah, yeah i i running endurance races in all continents i i running traditional races like uh, daytona sebring uh, i run some special races like uh, in Africa, for example, Dakar, six hours in Dakar. No, a lot of people know that it's a very nice circuit in Baobab in Senegal. Mm. Uh, of course, I run in Australia, I run in other typical tracks. And what's my favorite track is uh, Nordschleife in Urbering. Mm -hmm. It was my first 24 hour race, I think in 2000, year 2000. But uh, a lot of emotion in in, in an Urboring and uh, because it's a lot of team, a lot of people, that's uh, motorsport is a little bit uh, cheaper, it's some cheaper, cheaper, that pool is cheaper, like for example, Spa or of course Le Mans. Mm. For valuable, of course, it's, it's uh, Le Mans, 24 hour Le Mans is top of top, top level if it's possible, but it's not for all. Nurburgring is for all. It's mm. a difference. And does that does that really kind of change your perspective on the race? The, when it's um, does that decrease the pressure? So, for example, Le Mans is you know the top of the top, right? As you said, and other races are not so pressured. Is that true for you? Uh, of course, it's Le Mans is pressure for all all people. Yeah. Who tell you another? Shame, no. It's lying, yes. I think every people feel very big pressure in Le Mans. Uh, that's another race is more fun. It's more fun. I, I like uh, I like endurance races, of course, because for sprint races I am I am old. I am old. I if I'm looking for me and for for the young driver, which is in the pool, it's different. It's different for acceleration for all because <laughs> it's age. Yeah, no, of course, it makes a difference. And you've obviously changed uh, from going from civil engineering and real estate development to racing. How did you um, make that transition? And did you actually just specifically do those things like real estate development so that you could race? Uh, it's uh, normally if I start, I start very late. I told in 33 years and I start only if I have budget for for start. And civil engineering, and uh, it's a very good job. In my country, because change a system uh, was communism, now it's another capitalism. <laughs> but but was a lot of uh, possibilities for business, and I am uh, I am developer, and I am also a lawyer. That I worked a lot with parcel grounds, real estate. It was very good business, and I know change for racing. Ch racing was my hobby from my I mean, remembered. I have one, two, three years. I'm looking for formula cars and for all that possibility. But uh, now, of course, stop with my business and full time give to racing. And it shows with the number of trophies you have behind you. Like clearly, <laughs> you do give a lot of time to racing. So, when was the first time you got into a car? Oh, I think whew, in a race car or race normal car. Oh, race, car. race car. First time I sit in the race car in '33. I remember I have a very bad car. I was in first year, which I run uh, every time I was last. But I am, I am that stubborn. I am very stubborn, and problem for a lot of people is everybody thinks that is best lover and best driver in race car and come to that race event it's not first and this people is very sad and for me I understand that I need to learn I learn 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 and step by step and 
Of course, after two, three, four, five years, sometimes was in podium, bring some some uh, caps, some trophy. It's normal, and it's all all everything in life you must learn. It's the same in racing, same in business, same with all. So it sounds like you really learned quite a few lessons through business, where you had to fail again and again and again and then learn from those mistakes like you did in business and in racing to then start becoming better and better to the point where you know you are 100 percent you know beating and competing with people who are half your age so how did you manage to um still keep up with them in terms of fitness in terms of training oh i i told in my country is uh, national sport ice hockey mm. it's uh, it's uh, i played Three times in a week, ice hockey, because I don't like uh, swim, I don't like fitness, I don't like run. Uh, I like ice hockey and very good for condition. Also today, I was <laughs> in the stadium. And uh, I think I have maybe good ge genetic? genetics. Genetic. <laughs> I'm okay, and I'm, my health is okay in this moment, and I hope will be for also for future. <laughs> the ice hockey is a rough sport, right? Isn't that a bit of a risk when it comes to yeah. your possibly getting hurt for a, a race coming up, as an example, or something like that? Yeah, of course, but we play with friends and uh, we have some professional ex ex uh, players, but we 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 play very fair because that people know I am a little bit older, like another players, and then. Maybe looking for my age. <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet. Looking for my age and it's not very hard to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Um, and that's very uh, thoughtful of them. But I've never heard of someone who uses ice hockey as a training regiment for motorsport. Maybe, you know, this could be a new business venture where you teach people <laughs> ice hockey as a method of training <laughs> and, uh, you know. no for young people is fitness in simulator and all this but no i am old i am old school <laughs> yeah i don't change it <laughs> for sure i mean uh, but it's it's working you know you can't deny it works so um obviously uh, you funded yourself right um and therefore you didn't really have that fear of sponsorship being an issue um and you know, a lot of people that I've spoken to have, you know, had to deal with many things when it comes to sponsors, where they, uh, you know, often drop them or maybe they just don't really want to work with them anymore. Maybe they're not performing. You know, there's a lot of um, issues there. So how did you manage to um, use that, the fact that you don't have to find sponsorship and things like that? So how did you manage to find the right sort of teammates, the right sort of people to work with um, when you weren't the one who had to bring the money and all the other things that came with it? Whew, also a difficult question. It's not easy, of course. If we are in motorsport, my team is motorsport 20 years, and I think we have good credit. We don't have debit, we don't have some, some problematic teams, no problem with money, for salary, for nothing. And, you know, motorsport is a very small world. All people know, so people know in Australia, people know in America, in Europe, and I think we have a good name and no problem. A lot of people contact me about the driver, won't bring some budget, of course. Uh, we have English engineer or French engineer which works with us, and the people know that all my life, if I tell something, it's true, and if I promise something, that will be no change, no speculate, I pay, and I think because yo yo yo, I give give words to me, Michaela. <laughs> Every time, I think this is. Yeah, it's it's something that uh, a lot of people talk about that um, the fact that there were deals made with just a handshake in the millions before, and these days, you know, you can't even trust someone to. Uh, complete their own job or finish something off you know because back um, you know a few decades ago let's say people were a lot more trusting of each other whereas in today's world it's a lot more harder to find genuine people that you can um, trust and I guess by building that over the years and by building a reputation of being someone who can be trusted has been 
to your benefit. So yeah, I mean, kudos to you in that sense. So I would like to touch up more on um, how that has uh, affected your um, opportunities in terms of the races as well. So um, having a good team, as you said, is, uh, you know, comes from building a trustworthy relationship. So what kind of things do you also do as a team that builds on that um, relationship between the drivers? Oof. Relationship between drivers. I think uh, in the truck, it's not a very good relationship between drivers. All is fighter. But uh, in team, after race, I don't have a problem with somebody. I think a lot of drivers is very friendly and very good relationship, re relationships. We run in Asia, of course, in track, big fight, come to catering after race and speak very friendly about all because it's a hobby. At first, every time think that it's a hobby. After only second, we are not professional, maybe for professionals and other, and other relationships. But for in this level, I think, the Sergeant Le Mans or International GT or like Pain Endurance in my category, my class, because every time I'm running in some gentleman class or arm, arm class, pro arm class, so maybe between pro driver is another, but I don't know. I was I was never professional driver. I was every, every time only gentleman driver and this level, every time was very good relationships. Mm. And um, it sounds like you've obviously traveled a lot naturally through racing. So what countries do you find, um, describe some of the traits. So for example, let's say you said you went to Africa to race, right? How was the atmosphere, the people, the race circuit, everything? How was that different, for example, comparing it to somewhere like um, France, for example? <laughs> France. This is France is Le Mans. Every time is France is Le Mans. But uh, if you speak about which country, I yes, we travel a, a really a lot, a lot. My life is uh, airports, hotels, trucks. I was sometime ten times in some circuit, nearly to some city, and people ask me for the city, and I never was in the city because I come to circuit. I am in circuit. Who is in motorsports? Uh, that people know that it's a very very busy and a lot of works with every details between the endurance races between every races before every races and uh, every country is nice i think for me it's interesting i don't have some favorite countries all is the same africa is always of course very specifically we start to race and uh, in the first curve of ships you must break a lot because uh, somebody come with ships around the track. But <laughs> it's Africa, we waited. But circuit is nice. Owner is Belgian guy and race was very nice, for example. Of course, yeah. very interesting was uh, Bad Hurts for me. With that, uh, uh, Kangouras. <laughs> it was driver's briefing and uh, Stuart told us that if we uh, have two yellow flags in head attention because Kangura's on the tracks. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, really, the race of Kangura's, for example. Yeah, rare experiences yeah. like that make it worthwhile. Every country right? is another. Every country is another. Also, America is another. A lot of my races, majority of my races is in Europe, of course, because it's typical. I love uh, very good atmospheres in, of course, Le Mans. And specifically, 24 hour Nurburgring. It's a really, really nice. It's people love that sport, sport. And you feel it. Mm. And, and that obviously changes the way you feel about the, the energy when you're racing as well. And what, that's a lot of um, information about what's on the track. But what do you feel are things that people don't really know? about motorsport and you know as as a fan for example in the stadium they see you racing they see um you know the you on the track but what do you feel people don't know about racing like what it really is about so for example um you know if you're in a situation where um as a driver you're having to uh, stick to a certain regimen if you're having to um eat certain food you have to 
train ice hockey, for example, or, you know, do what kind of things don't people know about behind the scenes that is a, is a very common thing that you have to do? Uh, of course, a lot of people look so, or know only if you see the car and car start, but it's only it's 5% up, 95% is works before it all transport, all preparing, all payment, all think about drivers, about mates, about techniques. It's a lot of, lot of works and people don't know it, but of course, interesting is a trace. And uh, I, I like that moment if I close the door and go to start, mm. because all these problems is behind me. <laughs> that people don't know it. Racing ahead of it. Yeah, yeah, that people don't know it. Uh, a lot of a lot of young people speak, ask me a very romantic idea about motorsport. Yeah, we want, and it's very hard. And at first, of course, it's money because motorsport is technical sport. And if you want to be good, you need good material. If you don't have good ma money, don't have good material. You can be, and every year is harder and harder and harder. It looks for every level of motorsport. You need all good sponsors, all family which help you, or father which was a race driver. Looking now, it's a, all driver have father which was before very good driver, for example. That's it's hard. Start now from zero is really really very hard. Mm. I mean, no possible since you've been in the industry for yeah. almost uh, about twenty five years now, how do you feel it's changed over time? Yeah, of course, I start in the smaller races, national races in Middle Europe. Um, before the system, I have uh, Skoda, which have uh, six one hundred horsepower. It was a big difference, and but of course, both uh, Skoda have one hundred horsepower, but was seventy cars in there because it was very cheap. Now is that maybe fifteen cars, but every car is expensive. And uh, that's change. That's uh, in my country, for example, in Middle Europe, because we are we're running championship, which name is uh, FIA Central Europe Zone Trophy. It's 15 countries in Central Europe, in Balkan, South Europe. And it was, it was a, a lot of car before. And now it's not a lot of car, but quality is up. Mm. It's, it sounds like there's... Um obviously the difficulty is increasing the amount of sponsorship and you know the amount of people in interested in motorsport is also um increasing but definitely you've had a trajectory and a, and a life where you've had to overcome so many obstacles in your life in terms of um developing everything for yourself from scratch in terms of business then going into motorsport and failing there and then going ahead again so what message would you like to leave the audience to help them believe in themselves and be able to take the sort of, sort of risks that you have throughout life? Uh, I think you must be stubborn, you must be ambitious, you must never, you must, you must believe to your dream. And uh, you need a lot of lucky, of course, in life. Mm. If you have that lucky, <laughs> you, can, you, you, you can, you can, touch your dream but before it no possible and motorsport is one of the difficult sports in the world very nice but very very difficult and uh, oh, that's all i thought i think thank you very much Mara, for being podcast and uh, sharing your thoughts it was a pleasure having you on thank you very much also bye bye